guys on The Drink Pro. I've got a treat from Washington State. Today we're sampling Woodenville Straight Bourbon. Hey guys, Drink Pro here. Thanks so much for joining me yet again. I hope you all are subscribing and liking these videos. If you have some extra money and you want to help out the show and get some really cool content, I hope you're checking out the Patreon. All the support from this group has just been wonderful. I love making these videos. I love seeing people, you know, engaging with this process with me and sending me samples to try and release to you guys. Uh, it's just been an honor to be a part of this. So I hope you're staying engaged. Please reach out to me. Let's make something happen. It's, it's a community. It's intended to be a society of drinking professionals. I want to give a big shout out to Cody Flynn. I shamelessly reached out to Cody about a sample uh, of a different whiskey I'm not sampling today. And he brought me a sample of that to his credit, and further to his credit, he brought me an extra sample, which is this Woodenville Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Thanks so much, Cody, for supporting the show. Really appreciate it, man. This is an interesting tag. I like what he's done here as well because it gives me some details about the whiskey. So the Woodenville is a straight bourbon. It's at 45%, and it's coming from a distillery in Washington State. What I really like about what they're doing out there, though, is everything is being done on location or as close as possible. They're sourcing local grains to make the mash bill that goes into the whiskey. They're distilling it there at Woodenville, and then they're moving the barrels to a different location, but still within Washington State for aging. I really like that they're taking control of every part of the process. That obsessiveness and that attention to detail can yield fantastic results. Cody's also put some good detail on here that it's a pot distilled whiskey. A lot of American whiskeys are made using column stills, uh, or coffee stills are sometimes referred to as, and those can really narrow the flavor profile of a whiskey because of how that process works. So a pot still should have a broader flavor profile than your average bourbon you're gonna pull off the shelf. So like I said, it's 45% alcohol. It's made with 72% corn, 22% rye, and 6% barley. Now that's an interesting mash bill. 80% corn is enough to be called corn whiskey, but it's also 22% rye, so it's almost a corn whiskey, and it's a high rye mash bill. All that accompanied with this pot still nature should be really interesting. Now, I like this too. Cody put on this bottle that they claim that it's a five-year whiskey. He must not believe that because it says five-year parentheses claimed. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Let's see what's going on with this one. On the nose, this is just beautiful smelling. Very sweet. I get a little bit of grain. I get a little bit of floral note. But I'm really hitting the face with vanilla. The vanilla really is the first and most aggressive note. Um, and the more I keep smelling it, the more pervasive the vanilla is. It's, it's definitely uh, got combinations of different vanilla qualities. Sometimes you get vanilla extract, which is sharper. Sometimes you get a more rounded vanilla bean or a vanilla plant. But as I keep nosing it, that sweetness and that vanilla kind of subside a little bit. And we start to see other notes come out. The rye spice becomes present. I'm also getting some of that wood, some of that barrel showing up. Which is interesting because Washington State's not particularly hot. Usually hotter locations, uh, like Texas, for example, you're going to see barrel notes creep into whiskeys very quickly. Uh, Balconis is a very common example, which we've just got in Indiana, so I'm looking forward to trying some Balconis product. But to get a little barrel note on this, I'm not sure I believe that five-year claim. Maybe it's for a different reason than what I initially assumed based on Cody's note. I'm actually getting some citrus on the nose as well. Particularly when I open my mouth and let the alcohol flow through, and the ethanol gets out of the way and I'm just getting pure flavor notes. It's very bright. That rye spice is almost like a lemon zest um, and maybe even a little bit of like lemon juice. It's very sharp and bright. There's an accompaniment of maybe a slight clove. No, maybe like a like a apple skin note. You know, for being such limited quantity malt, I'm definitely getting some maltiness out of this. The sweetness of the corn shows up, but <laughs> The, the malt uh, is playing some kind of a role because I'm getting a malty sweetness on the nose. But yeah, it, it goes from really sweet to then you get rye spice to hints of, um, of the barrel and, and some hints of that citrus lemon zest kind of thing. Very complex nose. Um, this whiskey is between $30 and $50 depending on where you buy it. 
I expected a lot simpler nose, but it keeps evolving and changing and shifting on me, which I really like. Uh, that's high praise for a young distillery and for people who are doing everything locally. That's a hard position to be in. So you're really asking a lot of a distillate to do that. Let's see if I'm as impressed with the taste as I am on the nose. Uh-oh. Man, it tastes young. This, this kind of, uh, uh, so much potential. Oh, and now I smell it. I'm getting that new make note. God, the first thing I tasted was a sharpness. Uh, what, 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 but people that tend to drink a lot of whiskey will notice in younger whiskeys and in craft whiskeys, this sort of sharp, almost metallic characteristic. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people like that characteristic, but I tend not to. It's really prominent on new make. Even in column stills, you get this sharpness that is un undeniably a corn, metallic, sharp, sweet thing going on that's just common with new make. And after tasting it, I went back to the nose and all I got was that metallic new make and dusty corn. That new make smell, that dusty corn and metallic sharpness is very classic young craft whiskey. And I was getting so many good notes right out of the bottle and they all disappeared as soon as I tasted it. You know, your smell is a lot of taste, but certain things just become overwhelming. And, and I see now why Cody put claim in parentheses on the bottle when he saw the five year mark. It really doesn't taste like a five year product. It tastes like something maybe 18 months or two years in a barrel. Um, I do think part of that is because it's being done in Washington State. Washington State has a much different uh, a climate than a place like Kentucky or a place like Texas or a place like Tennessee where you're getting these hot sweltering summers that really age the whiskey quick. Um, you're not getting that as much in Washington State. And maybe over time, this whiskey will take on more of a scotch quality. I know there are distilleries in the Pacific Northwest that are doing things more like scotch, in part because their climate is closer to Scotland, arguably, than it is to Texas. And that's all fine and good. <laughs> but if you're making a bourbon product, I kind of expect it to taste like Kentucky bourbon. And this really doesn't. That's not to say this isn't good. Um, it's got a lot of classic corn whiskey characteristics. Um, very sweet. This, this brightness at the beginning of the palate. There's definitely like a sweet middle citrusy note. It's much like that lemon zest I was talking about on the nose. There's no finish to this at all though. It just disappears. There's no woodiness. There's no sweetness. There's no anything. It just disappears, which is weird. After my first sip, I gave it another chance and kind of kept going back to it. And I'm really starting to see what they're trying to do here. And it's and it's more exciting to me than it was in that initial first pour. The nose was so powerful though. It was such a wonderful smell in that first nosing that I came into it with, with elevated expectations. Uh, it is a young American corn whiskey from a craft distillery. And I know it's not technically corn whiskey, it's 72% corn and not 80 or more, but it's like a corn whiskey. That high rye component is not showing up yet. Uh, the corn is still overpowering it. The grain really shows up on the, on the initial taste. You get almost a bitterness from the grain in the mid palate. Along with that, it's, that's that lemon zest, I think. You get the citrusy. If you've ever actually done real lemon zest, it's bitter. And I kind of get that bitterness in this. As I keep sipping on this, the finish does start to show up a little bit. There's a little bit of a lingering soft pepper, maybe a, uh, maybe hints of wood, but it's very subtle. I gotta say, I don't think this would be a daily drinker for me. I'm not a big fan of corn whiskey. The corn whiskeys aren't usually my daily go-tos. It's not bad though. It's quite good for what they're doing and for the price they're charging. Under $50, this is a damn fine craft whiskey, but I have to put that qualifier on it. It's a very good craft whiskey. Um, I would like to be able to say unequivocally it's a very good whiskey, but I'm not sure I'm ready to say that yet. That said, I think what Woodenville's doing is really good. It's very promising. They're doing it all in-house, which I really like. They're exercising control over all parts of the process, which I really like. I can't fault them for anything on, on this. It, it's a matter of process and getting used to what they're doing and getting more age on these barrels. 
Um, you got to make money somehow, so releasing Young Whiskey is bound to happen in the craft distillery world. I really look forward to seeing what they can put out once they get 10 or 12 or even 15 years on a barrel of this, because it's going to, I'm suspecting, this is going to look a lot like a corn whiskey in Scotland, which will be a cool mashup of a classic whiskey location and flavor profile with a pot still and with that kind of climate, but in a world of corn whiskey and bourbon stylings. Very cool stuff, guys. I think, honestly, I would recommend buying this only because I want to support what these guys are doing so much. It's good to have a corn whiskey on your shelf. It's good to have local distilleries on your shelf uh, and, and people that are making cool things and trying uh, interesting processes. But I don't think on my own volition I'm going to drink this as a daily drinker. Uh, and that's usually the standard I look for. Is If I'm going to pick something off the shelf and say, yes, I would like the taste of that in my mouth, that's what I go for, and I, I don't think I can recommend this in that realm. Thanks so much, everybody, for supporting the show. Keep watching. Subscribe if you can. Share the video with a friend. If you know somebody that's getting into whiskey, they want to learn about what they like and don't like, they want to see somebody that's not just giving positive reviews all the time, send them my way. I know I give a lot of positive reviews, but people send me really good whiskey. What am I going to do? Not drink it? Of course not. Thanks so much for staying engaged, guys. And I know you'll keep drinking like professionals, but my glass is empty, so... I'm going to drink like a professional, like this. Cheers!